did we do this one abhishek no no ma'am yeah we did <clears throat> the reason why corporates fail um, because uh, see when the external environment uh, there are many changes that are taking place technologically um, there's a lot of advancement but if the organization is not um, willing to change or doesn't change according to the changes that are taking place then in that case that will be the main reason why corporates fail so um see that uh, complacency that is a satisfied attitude in business doesn't work see when um, things are changing they also have to catch up with the changes they cannot be satisfied with the way the, uh, they are operating because that will soon um, um, i mean prove out to be as outdated and that they will be out of the market so that that should not be the case so strategic drift the slow incremental emergence of strategy when radical change demanded by the environment when there are um, changes taking place at a dynamic level dynamic pace the technology is changing if they are not willing to change but they uh, still um, prefer to change at an incremental pace slow and incremental pace that that will um, put them out of the market that is one major reason if the management is um, not able to manage the affairs of the business effectively poor marketing poor quality poor acquisitions acquisitions is also one major reason um, see to acquire another business because uh, if growth has to happen either growth happens at an incremental phase or at a dynamic phase where they either join hands with someone else joint venture they Uh, get into a joint venture business or they can also acquire another business so when they acquire another business the size of the business increases the volume of activity increases profitability increases that is all with that intention acquisitions take place but um, see when another business is acquired all the funds are um, tied up there in the acquisition now the acquisition has to um, see the um, subsidiary um if it is it happens to be profitable or if they are able to manage the subsidiary as they are managing their own um, parent company then things would be fine but if if there is any issue there if there is if there is an impact on the profitability no cash flows then as it is all their funds are tied up in acquisition and on top of that if there are uh, no cash uh, flows uh, coming into the business then that will have an impact on the liquidity and slowly uh, it will lead to failure of the organization so acquisitions uh, as they look attractive uh, so is the case with the amount of risk that is present in acquisition so um, acquisitions is another thing they are unable to because it may not be the same business uh, it will not be the same manner in which the activities are carried on in the subsidiary so subsidiary may be operating at a different level different um, environment different style and functions which are applied there um, different from their own uh, parent company so in that case if they cannot handle that they cannot manage the acquisition effectively that could also be another reason for uh, failure change uh, failure to adapt uh, to, to changes in the environment so they cannot um, face the strategic um, competitive um, competitor strategies and all um, in that case also that's another reason if too much in, of investment is made into one large project okay just like acquisition one large project funds are all tied up in the large project large project only if it happens to be a profitable one then they can come out of that otherwise if the project fails then that will have an impact on the entire organization so that is one reason then inability to raise sufficient funds there are many reasons why um, they are unable to raise sufficient funds if sufficient funds the concept uh, arises because of um, what is the proportion of their capital as of now what is the amount of debt versus equity that was raised and invested into the business so if we are talking about debt versus equity 
if already they have raised lot of debt and invested in the business raising additional debt becomes a problem because the debt has these obligations of meeting the um, cost of capital and repayment promptly on the maturity date therefore um, the risk is high in case of debt capital since the risk is already high in the business other lenders or other investors would not come forward to extend additional loan that's one reason if their liquidity position is bad if they were if they have a record of not meeting their uh, payments promptly on the due date that's another reason why uh, investors uh, do not extend additional loan so any kind of uh, their profitability is not good over a period of time that could be another reason so any kind of these reasons if if the investors get to know about then they do not provide funds so inability to raise sufficient funds is another reason why organizations okay um, um, how do we uh, deal with this situation so why do um, companies fail two main reasons what we can talk about is because they are not uh, able to adjust to the changes that are happening in the external environment uh, risk covers decision making complacency economies of production and administration limited opportunities for innovation and diversification so um, there is no scope for them to um, experiment anything so it has to go in the same manner and then um, gradually they may reach that decline stage and then um, become a uh, uh, fail so maybe there is a limited mental model there is only um, they do not come out with the new ways of do, dealing the business so because of not uh, um, changing according to the changes in the environment or adapting themselves to the uh, changed environment those those could reasons could be the main reasons for uh, failure strategic drift as the change is happening on par with the change the entity also has to change if they prefer to change at a slow incremental uh, pattern wherein the external environment things are changing at a, a rapid pace in that case also that mismatch also can uh, result in a failure of the organization now um, there are many methods uh, to assess whether there is a possibility of um, an organization heading towards insolvency or bankruptcy but out of those methods for us in our syllabus we have two methods one is a quantitative method quantitative method by way of calculating uh, z score or z score so there is a formula given by altman we call this as altman z score so by calculating this we get to understand what is the score based on the score the interpretation also can be given about uh, the whether it is actually um, heading towards failure or uh, the financial situation in the company is good so this is by way of z score quantitative model there is one more model qualitative model which will talk about uh, what are the um, i mean um, reasons or factors um, which can result in a failure i mean that that are that are happening in the organization that uh, can result in a failure of the organization that's urgency model so first we'll learn about the quantitative model so when we uh, start working uh, case studies we will also work out one question on uh, altman z score and there is an exclusive case study in the examination kit we'll pick it up and then we'll solve this one also there are five variables which um, altman has um, listed out and these five variables are put into a uh, equation so that equation is represented by z z score so these five variables are x1 x2 x3 x4 x5 so what is x1 now each of these uh, variables have a coefficient so coefficient the um, coefficients are 1.2 x1 1.4 3.3 0.6 and 1 these are the coefficients of all these variables starting from x1 to x5 higher the coefficient greater is the importance because the that variable will be multiplied with with its coefficient so what importance is given to that 
can be decided by what is the coefficient that is given. So he has identified five variables. The first one, x1, is um, the it, it, it indicates the liquidity position so that is given as working capital by total asset. What, what amount of investment did they make into working capital um, out of the total assets? What portion of them? See, uh, if there are more number of uh, current assets, uh, they will be able to promptly meet all their current liabilities. Okay. So, for that reason, out of the total assets, what's the portion of working capital? Second, X2. X2 talks about out of the total uh, profits available, after dis distributing dividends to the ordinary equity shareholders, what uh, what amount of profits did they retain? See, if they have retained earnings, it, it indicates the growth possibility for the organization because retained earnings are usually retained uh, to be invested into the um, business. Additional investment, further investment will result in uh, further growth of the organization. Okay, um, it sometimes also is um, um, kept in the business uh, to meet any contingent uh, uh, liabilities that arise in the future. But the main reason why um, retained earnings are um, retained in the business, or earnings that are retained in the business, is for reinvestment. Reinvestment will result in growth, growth of the organization, more profits available in future. Okay. Uh, retained earnings by total assets, that's X2. Then uh, we see X3 uh, as, X3 has a coefficient of 3.3. So X3 is very important. What is X3? So what amount of profit is available? EVIT, earnings before interest and tax. What amount of profits are available for the amount of investment made into total assets? So uh, generating profit out of the investment that is uh, made. So total assets. As a result of total assets, what is EVIT available? So EVIT by total assets. Then we see market value. X4 is, uh, it talks about the market value, market value of both the equity. What is the value of the shares in the market? That is the share price that is present in the market. Um, based on that, find out the market capitalization or market value of equity shares. Compare that with the total liabilities. What, um, how, how much is the total liabilities amount which is there in the books of accounts or as such, how much do they have to repay? Okay. So that is uh, X4. That is that's given, that's given the least importance, 0.6 only. Uh, then the next one, 1. 1 is the coefficient of X5. X5 is about whether they are able to generate turnover ratio. This is basically a turnover ratio. Whether the to investment into total assets is able to generate sales. So after sales only, we will have the profit available. So the finally, what is the profit available is given importance. That is 1.4 X2. Then we see the liquidity given the third important position. The fourth one uh, is whether they are able to generate uh, sales or not out of the total amount of investment made into total assets. And the fifth one is, what is the performance of the shares in the stock market? Okay. Um, yeah. uh, Ma'am, uh, why this 1.2, 1.4, 3.3 is that? That is given. See, this is, this is somehow he has arrived at that. What, what weightage should be given? What ranking? I mean, if the ranking has to be given, uh, where, where would it be? Uh, how would it be given uh, importance to? The profitability, if the profitability is good, the rest of it will all be in, in its place. So first thing is he's given importance to um, profitability. So he has come out with a fixed variable called as 3.3. So this is the weightage which he has given to profitability. Then um, he's, I mean, these are, how did he um, define these things or how did he come out to, uh, this particular thing was 3.3, 1.4. I mean, it is his understanding about that, how he has assigned these uh, weights to the, these variables. We do not have any, um, I mean, uh, in details about how did he arrive, derive these, this equation or arrive at these values. This is just that the 
that he's given some weights to each variable. So ranking wise is ranked this one as one, then um, the profitability part of it, which is retail in the business, which can help in growth. Um, then the third one is about the liquidity. Fourth one is about turnover activity level. And the last one is the performance of the stock market. Now, after the value, uh, the Z value is calculated. If the Z value is about three, the calculated value of Z is about three, we can infer that the organization is financially sound. There is no issue with that. There's no problem that it would be um, going for bankruptcy or filing for insolvency. There is no such issue. But if the calculated value is less than 1.81, then it is a dangerous situation. They would soon be filing for insolvency. They are from bankrupt, heading towards insolvency. If it if the calculated value is 1.81 or less than 1.8. But if the value is anything between 1.81 and 3, in that case, some restructuring can be done. Something can be done, reorganize reorganization or restructuring can be done and the situation can be revived. So anything between 1.81 and 3 need further investigation. What are the reasons? Why is it not doing well? What um, what changes can be brought about or what um, new policies can be implemented, etc. Some kind of a reorganization can take place, restructure themselves so that they can uh, become financially sound um, so calculated value calculated value of z talks about the financial position of the uh, company that's a quantitative model this yes, um, we will definitely solve one case study on that so you will have a better idea about that um, if you say we'll do it today also we can do it today uh, Qualitative model, qualitative model is um, there's no calculation uh, which needs to be taken up, but uh, identify whether there are any defects, mistakes or symptoms of failure. If there are defects, how what, what could be defects? Defects like uh, if the management is weak, not able to um, manage the efforts of the business, poor quality, poor management, uh, not taking appropriate decisions at the right time. So management weaknesses and the accounting uh, policies and procedures that are followed, there may be certain deficiencies. See the way things are valued, the way uh, certain items that are valued in the organization. So that also, um, has an impact on the profitability. Profitability, um, if the, if sufficient profits are not projected or shown, so these stakeholders' expectations also will uh, be connected to the profitability position. So if the profitability position is not appropriately reflected in the financial statement, let's say um, accelerated depreciation method, if it is adopted, so what does it indicate? they are showing a uh, huge amount of depreciation in the initial years. In the early years, they provide um, high amounts of depreciation in the books of accounts. So that will have an impact on the profitability. Profits shown in the books of accounts will, will reduce. The intention behind that is to um, reduce the tax burden, reduce the tax liability, which they have to pay. But simultaneously, that will also have an impact on various stakeholders. They may not continue to um, associate with the organization because of their profitability position, which is reflected in the financial statement. So such kind of deficiencies could be there. Um, accounting for certain un unearned revenue in the current year, showing the um, amount of profit to be very high. But in, in reality, they do not have such high profits or such high revenue. Uh, they are just accounting in the books of accounts. So some kind of uh, um, accounting policies which they have adopted could be, uh, that could not be appropriate. That would not be appropriate. So that could result in 
um, having an impact on uh, the stakeholders or the future activities which they are taking up. So that that is one defect. So if there are defects um, which are identified in terms of management weaknesses and accounting deficiencies, mistakes mistakes are um, high gearing. Gearing indicates about the amount of debt that is um, employed in the business. High amount of debt always increases the risk because irrespective of profitability situation, debt on the debt capital, interest has to be paid. So that will have an impact on the liquidity. Further, no one else will uh, or lend lenders or investors will not come forward to extend additional funds whenever they require. So high gearing is always very risky. So if at all uh, they have raised too much of debt capital to be invested in the business, that's a mistake. Too much of trust in a big project, large project, um, too much of importance is given because um, if the big projects do well, it is profitable, well and fine, but the well and good. But then uh, in that case, if the big projects fail, then it will have an impact on the overall organization. Okay, that's a mistake. Um, so you're not putting all the baskets in uh, all the eggs in the same basket. So that's that's the concept. So instead of depending only on one big project, they should take up multiple small projects. So that's a mistake. What are the symptoms of failure? If there are symptoms that are indicated and they are unable to look into that bleak financial indicators, see when when there are indicators which are indicating that something is not well with the organization, they fail to see that. If they do not understand that, then that also um, can result in a failure of the organization. If they are uh, into creative accounting, that is uh, window dressing, uh, manipulating um, accounting for transactions which have not taken place or something like that or uh, trying to inflate the profit or deflate the profit because of the policies which they are adopting okay so creative accounting is why is there a need for them to uh, be involved in creative accounting that is something is not well with the organization that's why they're thinking about uh, window dressing their financial statements or non-financial signs such as they uh, there are delayed investments not investing when when it is needed to be invested delayed investments are unable to make the salary payment promptly so these are all symptoms of failure so by looking into these things um, it is identified about uh, um, whether the organization is going to become bankrupt or not okay, that's a qualitative method Otherwise, we have other methods, but syllabus talks about only these two methods. So let's stick to these two methods only and learn them. Okay. But then how can uh, corporate failure be prevented? Strategies to prevent corporate failure. So it says that it depends on spotting warning signs and taking corrective action. Um, what, is, what is the reason why? they are not doing well investigate and identify the causes so once the causes are known things can be rectified take external advice seek external advice accept that there is a problem and move on to a solution um may involve major strategic changes uh, we have learned a concept called as bpr where they take um, radical changes because it is needed at that point of time because everyone else around them have changed so it is time for them also to change so if it is required that they have to change so they should be taking up a major uh, bring, bring about major changes in the organization put in controls to prevent further losses effective control system internal control system if they implement in the organization that will uh, help them to identify if there are any kind of indicators um, which suggest that there is a possibility of um, a failure in the organization so um, put in controls to prevent further loss have effective management systems in place to begin with okay um, strengthen their management systems so then in that case um, 